Good day to all the attendees, to all the viewers of today's presentation. You are welcome. Today's presentation is about understanding vegetables. Let us try to take a concrete step in understanding vegetables. The presentation today is divided into three distinct sections. The first section deals about classifying vegetables. This was dealt with by me earlier also, but today we are going to be classifying vegetables in three methods, three different methods. After doing that, we will move to the second topic, which is cooking vegetables in a different way and last but not the least a small presentation about some vegetables which perhaps most of us have never seen or dealt with Today's presentation is about understanding vegetables. So, just try to take for a concrete step during the in understanding which I would like you to the presentation today is divided into three distinct sections. The first section deals about classifying experiences in the chat box. This was dealt with by me earlier again then. But today we are going to be classifying vegetables, understanding vegetables in three methods, three different methods. After doing that, we will there are four ways move to, to the vegetables. second topic, which is cooking vegetables. According to the not different way, the plant, they come and out. last but not the least, a small presentation about some vegetables which perhaps most of us have never according to their seen or dealt with. And last but not the least, called Abrini Garden Vegetables. I am Chef Professor Alan Mittal, Principal of IHMA. First method of classification is the to all the attendees, to all the viewers of today's presentation, IHMA.com. We have potatoes and bulbs, for example, shives, onion, and garlic. Roots, beets, turnip, carrot, and radish. Good day to all the attendees, to all the viewers of today's presentation. You are welcome. Today's presentation is about 
understanding vegetables. Let us try to take a concrete step in understanding vegetables. The presentation today is divided into three distinct sections. The first section deals about classifying vegetables. This was dealt with by me earlier also, but today we are going to be classifying vegetables in three methods, three different methods. Sanand, I have allowed you to talk. After doing that, we will move to. The Please unmute yourself, Sanand Tiwari. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you, sir. Uh, is this uh, presentation visible to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is, sir. And am I audible to you clearly? Yes, sir. Very clearly. Yes, sir. All right. All right. We'll begin in two minutes. As you, sir. Uh, uh, I would like to uh, tell you to inform all the students. Okay, sir. As you say, sir. I will. Sir. It is about understanding vegetables. It is a very simple thing, but very effective. It sure, sir. Be a sure. Experience for you. Okay, sir. As you say, sir. I'll put you on mute again. Huh? Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Welcome, sir. All right, let's begin. It's almost time. Good evening to all the attendees. Here goes. Good day to all the attendees, to all the viewers of today's presentation. You're welcome. Today's presentation is about understanding vegetables. Let us try to take a concrete step in understanding vegetables. The presentation today is divided into three distinct sections. The first section deals about classifying vegetables. This was dealt with by me earlier also, but today we are going to be classifying vegetables in three methods, three different methods. After doing that, we will move to the second topic, which is cooking vegetables in a different way. And last but not the least, a small presentation about some vegetables, which perhaps most of us have never seen or dealt with, called unique vegetables. I am Chef Professor Anand Mittal, Principal of IHM Merit. You may want to note down my email address. It is dir.acad at ihmmerit.com in case there are any questions, queries, clarifications that you may want to pose to me. Post the presentation. During the presentation, I would like you to please Put your questions, comments, queries, perhaps your experiences in the chat box. Let us begin then with the presentation called Understanding Vegetables. There are four ways to classify vegetables. According to the part of the plant they come from, according to the flavor that the vegetables have, according to their color, and last but not the least, whether they are starchy or watery. The first method of classification, the part of the plant where the vegetables come from. Vegetables may be classified as tubers, for example, potatoes, and bulbs, for example, shives, 
onion and garlic. Roots, beets, turnip, carrot, and radish. Stem, asparagus, celery, and mushrooms. Leaves, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, greens, Lettuce, spinach, seeds, beans, peas, corn. Flowers, artichoke, cauliflower, broccoli. Fruit, cucumber, eggplant, tomatoes, and peppers. The second method of classifying vegetables is according to their flavor. Different vegetables have different flavors. The strong flavored vegetables are onions, leeks and garlic they are very strong flavored onions leeks and garlic these are not so strong as onions leeks and garlic but they are strong flavored brussels sprouts broccoli strong flavored Turnips, strong flavored. Cauliflower, and cabbage, red cabbage as well as green cabbage. The mild flavored vegetables are spinach mild flavored spinach celery beets peas Corn, squash, pumpkins, green beans, Potatoes, mild flavored. And carrots. Vegetables can be classified according to their colors also. Green colored vegetables such as peas, green beans, asparagus, celery, broccoli, and spinach. Red colored vegetables such as beets, red cabbage, and red peppers. Yellow or orange colored vegetables such as carrots, wax beans, corn, squash and sweet potatoes or white colored vegetables 
such as onions, potatoes, cauliflower, and leeks. So broadly speaking, there are four colors that all vegetables may be classified into green, red, yellow, orange, or white. The fourth and the last method of classification that I have considered is whether the vegetables are starchy or watery. Starchy vegetables include potatoes, sweet potatoes, corn and legumes, dry beans. The vegetables with a high water content are tomatoes, lettuce and celery. Lettuce and all leafy vegetables. Celery is very high in water and tomatoes are full of water. Having dealt with classification, let us move on to the second part of today's presentation is about cooking vegetables. The first slide in this series is about controlling quality changes during cooking. Cooking affects vegetables in four ways. It changes their texture, it changes their flavor, it changes the color of the vegetables and cooking alters the nutrient value of the food after cooking. One of the nutrients which is present in only in vegetables in a large quantity is fiber. The fiber is the cellulose. It is not very digestible by the human body, but it adds bulk to the food. Bulk which helps carrying the food to different parts of the body. When we cook food, there are changes in the texture of vegetables. What happens to the fiber? Fiber sometimes hardens and sometimes it softens depending upon how we are cooking. The amount of fiber in food varies in different vegetables. In mature vegetables, there is more fiber and in young vegetables, the amount of fiber is lesser and in different parts of the same vegetable. So in some parts of the vegetable, there may be more fiber and in some parts of the same vegetable, there may be lesser amount of fiber. Controlling texture changes in fiber. Fiber is made firm or soft depending upon the way it is cooked to the degree that it is cooked. Fiber may be made firmer by cooking vegetables in an acidic medium or by cooking vegetables in a medium which is high in sugars. These are the two factors which make the fibers firm. The third factor which keeps the fiber firm is by not cooking adequately. Fibers are softened by heat, by
be controlled in different ways. Cook for as short a time as possible. Use boiling salted water. Okay, uh, I have paused the video for a while. I see that two participants have raised their hands. Akarsh Tripathi. Akarsh, I am unmuting you. Please tell me. Good evening, sir. Yes, good afternoon. Good evening. There was a connectivity problem. That's why I have raised the hand. Voice was not coming. Okay, now is it coming? Yeah, sir. Okay, please lower your Thank hand. Thank you. Please lower your hand. Uh, also, uh, since I have stopped this video, I might as well make use of the of the pause. I would like to launch a poll. I want all of you to please answer this question quickly. Thank you. Please answer this question. So far only two, five people have answered, six people have answered out of 12. So far only eight people have answered out of 12. I'll wait for 10 more seconds. Only eight people have answered out of 12. That is not good. All of you should answer. Okay. Time's up. Ending the poll. Now I would like to share the results of the poll. So as you can see, eight people have answered the question out of 12. And all eight have said yes. So I'm going to be sharing such videos with you tomorrow also. Uh, I'll be requesting your class counselors to share the link with you for these webinars. And if you miss these videos, that's all right, because I'm going to be posting them live on Facebook and YouTube. So you can watch them later also. Okay. Thank you. I'm stopping the sharing of these results. And let us get back to the video. Starting vegetables in boiling water shortens cooking time. So before you add vegetables to water, make sure the water is boiling. This will shorten the cooking time. The addition of salt helps reduce flavor loss. The third point, use just enough water to cover the food. Minimizes leaching of flavor, color and nutrients. Leaching means transferring of flavor, color and nutrients from the vegetables to the medium in which they are being cooked to the water. That is leaching. And fourth, Steam vegetables wherever appropriate. Steaming reduces leaching out of flavor and it shortens the cooking time. Controlling flavor changes, cooking and sweetness. Young, freshly harvested vegetables have a relatively high sugar content that makes them taste sweet. As they mature or as they sit in storage, the sugar gradually changes to starch. Try to serve young, fresh vegetables that have been stored as short a time as possible. Vegetables are best had fresh and young. Color changes. How do you control color changes? Cooking produces flavor loss. Cooking produces certain chemical changes. As long as the vegetables are not overcooked, this change is desirable. Overcooking produces undesirable changes, especially in members of the cabbage family. They develop a strong, unpleasant flavor. Color changes to white 
vegetables pigments are compounds that give vegetables their color pigments called anthroxanthins anthroxanthins and flavonoids range from pale yellow to white white pigments stay white in acid and yellow in alkaline water I am saying I got a question. I got a question. Mm, somebody said I don't understand English. Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, I'll not be able to help you there because uh, uh, because uh, this video is in English. So you'll have to somehow manage yeah. I'm really so sorry I'm, I really wish I could help you but uh, that's how it is so back again to the video please tea and slippery also baking soda reduces the shelf life of the green vegetables so it should never be used controlling color changes of yellow and orange vegetables yellow and orange vegetables have carotenoids which are the yellow and orange pigments these pigments are very stable they are little affected by acids or alkalis short cooking prevents dulling of the color and preserves vitamins and flavors controlling nutrient losses while cooking six factors are responsible for most nutrient loss they are number one high temperature two long cooking three leaching dissolving out leaching will happen when you let the vegetables stay in the water after cooking them for some time you will see the color of the water begins to change and the color of the vegetables becomes duller the fourth method of controlling nutrient losses while cooking is by the use of alkali baking soda or cooking them in hard water water the fifth method of controlling nutrient losses is plant enzymes which are active at warm temperatures but destroyed by high heat please avoid high temperature and last but not the least oxygen oxygen is responsible for loss of nutrients oxidation of the nutrients take place cooking in little liquid versus lot of liquid using a lot of liquid increases vitamin loss by leaching using a little liquid increasing cooking time tests have shown that for these reasons no more nutrients are lost when vegetables are cooked in a lot of water than when vegetables are cooked in just enough water to cover general rules of vegetable cooking do not overcook cook as close to service time as possible and in small quantities 
Avoid holding for long periods on a steam table. If the vegetables must be cooked ahead of the time, undercook slightly and chill rapidly. Reheat at the service time. Never use baking as a cooking method for green vegetables. Cut vegetables uniformly for even cooking. Start with boiling salted water when boiling green vegetables and other vegetables that grow above the ground. Roots and tubers are started in cold salted water for more even cooking. Cook green vegetables and strong flavored vegetables uncovered. To preserve color, cook red and white vegetables in a slightly acidic, not strong acid liquid. To preserve color, cook red and white vegetables in a slightly acid liquid. Do not mix a batch of freshly cooked vegetables with a batch of the same vegetable that was cooked earlier and kept hot on a steam table. Standards of quality in cooked vegetables. Color. Color of the vegetable should be bright and natural. Appearance on plate. Cut neatly and uniformly, not broken up. Texture. Cooked to the right degree of doneness. And flavor. Full natural flavor and sweetness. <laughs> Seasonings. Vegetables should be lightly and appropriately seasoned. Sauces. Butter and seasoned butter should be fresh and not used heavily. Vegetable combinations, flavors, colors, textures should be pleasantly added for a proper combination. Washing. Wash all vegetables thoroughly. How to handle vegetables? Root vegetables should be scrubbed off with a stiff vegetable brush. Wash green leafy vegetables in several changes of cold water. After washing, drain well and refrigerate lightly covered. Soaking. Do not soak vegetables for long periods. Flavors and nutrients leach out. Dried legumes are soaked for several hours before cooking to replace moisture loss in drying. Dried beans absorb their weight in water. So 1 kg beans becomes 2 kgs when soaked in water. Handling vegetables, peeling and cutting. Peel most vegetables as thinly as possible. Cut vegetables into uniform pieces for even cooking. Peel and cut vegetables as close to cooking time as possible. Treat vegetables that brown easily with an acid such as lemon juice or an antioxidant solution or hold under water until ready to use. Some vitamins and minerals may be lost. Save edible trim for soups, stocks and vegetable gravies. Handling frozen vegetables. Checking quality, temperature, large ice crystals, signs of leaking on the carton and freezer burn. These are the four points that you should consider while checking the quality of frozen vegetables. Temperature, ice crystals, leaking of the carton and freezer burn. Handling canned vegetables, checking quality, reject damaged cans on receipt, puffed or swollen cans indicate spoilage. Know the drained weight, Typical drain weights are 60 to 65% of total contents. 
and check the grade. Production and holding problems in quantity cooking. Batch cooking and blanch and chill. Batch cooking involves dividing the food into smaller batches and cooking them one at a time as needed. Blanch and chill involves partially cooking, chilling and finished cooking. It is not as good nutritionally as cooking completely to order but is almost as good. Storage Fresh vegetables, how should the fresh vegetables be stored? Potatoes, onions and winter squash are stored at cool temperatures in a dry dark place 0 to 18 degrees centigrade in a dry dark place. Other vegetables must be refrigerated. Peeling, peeled and cut vegetables need extra protection from drying and oxidation. Cover or wrap and use quickly to prevent spoilage. Frozen vegetables. Store at minus 18 degrees centigrade, 0 degrees, 20, 0 degrees Fahrenheit or colder in con original containers until ready to use. Do not refreeze thawed vegetables. Please remember this. Do not refreeze thawed vegetables. Either use them or Throw them away if there is no need, but do not refreeze. Leftovers, the best way to store leftovers is not to create them in the first place. Now with this COVID pandemic especially, please understand that if there are any leftovers, please throw them away. So the best way to deal with leftovers is not to create them in the first place. And about leftovers, please do not mix batches. We move on to the last part of today's presentation, which is unique vegetables. Some vegetables are unique, very rarely to be seen. Fruits and pods such as ground berries, tomat tomatilla, strawberry tomatoes, cape gooseberry. In roots and stems, we have kohlrabi, celery act, and fennel. So these are the vegetables that we are going to be showing. What makes vegetable unique? Otherwise, they are parts of a specific cuisine. So they are not parts of general cuisine. They are difficult to grow and they are unusual in taste. The taste needs to be acquired. Ground cherry or husk tomato called tomatillo physalis is the botanical name. Native Americans preferred physalis species more than tomatoes. They are a genus related to tomatoes. They produce abundant small fruit that are surrounded by a husk covering like a gift harvested when the husk begins to break as shown in the picture. Tomatillo, strawberry tomatoes and cape gooseberry belong to the physalis category. At the bottom left you see a ripe husk tomato. Growing practices are similar to tomato. Strawberry proceed any further before we proceed any further i would like to launch one more poll uh, are you interested in one more poll anyway let's see so i'm launching the poll now please answer and then we will start
we have received six answers out of 12. I would like all of you to please answer. We have received eight answers out of 12. I'll wait for a while because some people need time to think. Ah, we have eight answers out of nine. Okay. Okay, so let us end this vote. We yeah, have we eight answers out of nine. nine. I'll, I'll end, end the polling. Nine, nine out of nine. nine. Hundred percent voted. Very good. Very good. Nine, nine of nine was voted. Let us end the polling now. And let us share the results. They are confusing. They are confusing. But sixty-seven. But sixty-seven. Definitely more than definitely more than thirty-three. <laughs> so, so I, I will, will do the whole video. It's just fifteen minutes. minutes. I do the whole video just now after this. And, and if you don't if want, you don't to, want watch it, to watch it, you can go to my, YouTube, go to channel, my YouTube, YouTube channel tomorrow, 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 whenever you want. Whenever you want. Right? Right? So we'll so do, we it do it after this. this. 15, 15 minutes, minutes is not, not, not long. It's about herbs. herbs. Very interesting. And if, if you don't need some 33% people don't want to watch it, don't watch it now. You can watch it later on in YouTube, my channel, Anand Mittal. I'm stopping sharing of results. And let us now re uh, begin the video. Three tomatoes, five cellars, pubescence. Around July, the fruit will begin to drop to the ground and should be gathered. When ripe, it has a flavor similar to that of strawberry or tomato pineapple. Cape gooseberry, Physalis peruviana. It has superior fruit compared to strawberry tomato. Commonly grown in warmer climates, does not tolerate rain or wet soils. It is grown from the seed. Kohlrabi. Kohlrabi, Brassica. Oleracea originated in Germany. Kohlrabi is a German word which literally translated means cabbage turnip. It has flavors similar to cabbage and turnip. Flavors similar to cabbage and turnip but milder and sweeter. It is available in several varieties. Celeria. Celeriac is enlarged bulb harvested when 10 to 12 centimeters in diameter. It is also called celery root, knob celery, or turnip root in celery. It does not grow abundantly. It is edible both raw and cooked. Its taste is similar to that of celery stalk. It has a high shelf life of over six months. The weaker does its flavor become. Net the vegetable which is not grown by a lot. 
नॉर्मल ग्रोथ ऑफ बोन्स एंड टी हेल्दी स्किन टिश्यू एंड नाइट विजन सोर्सेज ऑफ विटामिन ए इन वेजिटेबल ब्रोकलीटेन कोलाजिन विटामिन सी हेल्प बॉडी रिपेयर हेल्प एंड फाइट इन in vegetables are leafy greens and broccoli green peppers tomatoes and cabbage nutrients in vegetables d vitamins functions prevents beri beri helps body use carbohydrates either accept me or don't accept me don't try to change me तो तो मत डोंट हैव रिलेशन आई विल नॉट ब्लेस यू मेरी आशीर्वाद नहीं है तुम्हारे साथ ऐसा नहीं होता I'm so sorry. The connection got lost. Let's do it again. Yeah. Lost. Okay. Then I'll then I'll is only flavor, flavor, and find the wrong person. It was fresh in salad. फंक्शन ऑफ वाइटामिन ए इज दैट इट प्रमोट्स नॉर्मल ग्रोथ ऑफ बोन एंड टीथ इट हेल्प्स मेंटेन हेल्दी स्किन टिश्यू एंड नाइट विजन सोर्सेज ऑफ वाइटामिन ए इन वेजिटेबल लीफी ग्रीन एंड डीप येलो वेजिटेबल ब्रोकली कैरेट एंड स्पॉट विटामिन सी फंक्शन ऑफ वाइटामिन सी it helps body form and maintain in collagen vitamin c helps body repair itself and fight infections need of the day to day the sources of vitamin c in vegetables leafy greens and broccoli green peppers tomatoes and cabbage nutrients in vegetables b vitamin functions prevent very very help body use carbohydrates 
हेल्प बॉडी ब्रेक डाउन प्रोटीन सोर्सेज ऑफ विटामिन बी इन वेजिटेबल्स आर सीड वेजिटेबल्स ड्राई बीन्स एंड नाइमा बीन्स एंड पीज फंक्शन ऑफ मिनरल्स इन ह्यूमन बॉडी मिनरल्स बॉडी नीड्स बॉडी विद एनर्जी एंड कार्बोहाइड्रेट आर फाउंड इन हाई क्वान्टिटी इन पोटेटो forms of vegetables collection and storage fresh vegetables should be crisp bright in color firm and they should be absence of decay storage vegetables fresh vegetables should be stored in the refrigerator and should be eaten not long after seasoning or after production canned vegetables the advantages of canned vegetables are that they are pre cooked and convenient to use the disadvantage of canned vegetables are that they are higher in sodium and they are possibly mushy in texture they should be stored canned vegetables they should be stored at room temperature and you should strictly follow any expiration date if given on the can how to deal with frozen vegetables frozen vegetables the benefits of frozen vegetables are that they are partially prepared like canned vegetables that there is no need to thaw them before cooking we can directly begin cooking of the frozen vegetables from the freezer to the pan right away no sodium is added to them like in canned vegetables fresh uh, frozen vegetables retain the appearance and flavor of freshly picked vegetables frozen vegetables require are less costlier than fresh vegetables and frozen vegetables make it possible for us to use vegetables round the year they are available out of the season also how do we store frozen vegetables keep them frozen at minus 18 degree centigrade or lower and remember this i have said this earlier also do not refreeze if thawed once they become soft we should never refreeze them we should either use them or just simply throw them away Dried vegetables. Most common dried vegetables are legumes. The benefits of dried vegetables are they have a very long shelf life, and the disadvantage of of dried vegetables are that you must soak them before cooking. Storage store in a cool, dry store room. Prepare vegetables with care. Cook for the shortest time possible. Shortest time is underlined. Heat destroys some vitamins. Use some vitamins dissolved in cooking water. Pare or cut just before. Pare and light destroy some vitamins. प्रिपेयर द लार्जेस्ट पीसेस द स्मॉलेस्ट एरिया ऑल ऑफ दी अब 
but this time little water just before cooking and largest pieces possible serve or save cooking with food in soup sauces gravy and stews don't throw away the nutrients in the cooking water during cooking these are the changes that happen to vegetables the cellulose fiber becomes softened by the heat moisture in cooking the starch absorbs water swells and becomes easier to digest flavors and colors undergo changes of the nutrients may be lost better to be able to cook boiling in a small amount of water in a covered pan baking bake vegetables in their own skins after washing them thoroughly and the picture shows some baked vegetables mushrooms onion cauliflower potatoes carrots french frying fry vegetables after dipping in batter or crumbs french fries are not fried either in batter or in crumbs but coat lightly coat the finger finger to fry them then the potato french fries become extra crisp fry them in hot oil deep enough to cover the vegetables full spoon of fat in a skillet pan or wok broiling or grilling broiling or grilling the difference between broiling and grilling is even though the same equipment is used for both that in broiling we do not use any fat and in grilling we use fat we use or base vegetables in fat while grilling brush vegetables with fat or oil in case of grilling and in case of boiling broil over or under direct heat the tomatoes are to be boiled because they have a high water content and most of the vegetables are grilled with the fat steaming steaming is one of the best ways of cooking vegetables it reduces leaching redu- reduces leaching of nutrients and colors and flavors into the cooking liquid and it cooks faster steam mild flavored vegetables in excuse steam vegetables which is cooked in the microwave what are the benefits benefits are little or no nutrient loss they are good in flavor and texture note remember to pierce vegetables cooked in their skins for example piercing a potato with a fork otherwise it may burst upon cooking in the microwave qualities of cooked vegetables flavorful and tender crisp in texture overcooked or improper and they lose many of their nutrients
which is the last week that and nutrition and the final day will train and nutrition length of cooking time cook vegetables only until fork tender fork tender means that they should be able to be picked up with the help of a fork they should not slide out of the fork that is overcooked and the fork should not find it very difficult to penetrate that is undercooked overcooking dulls the color gives an unpleasant flavor and causes the vegetables to become mushy with that we come to an end to today's presentation there is however the last slide which is about a quiz there are a lot of questions that i wanted to ask but since this is purely a presentation given over the net so nevertheless there are two questions that i would like to pose to you please put the answers in chat if you know the first question is what is the main nutrient missing in vegetables so i have told you that vegetables have got vitamins they have got minerals there were so many other things so what is the main nutrient which is missing in vegetables i'll give you three two one and Goal. The answer is fat. The second question: Which is easier for the body to digest, raw vegetables or cooked vegetables? Please put the answer in the chat box quickly. I'm waiting. Which is easier for the body to digest, raw vegetables or cooked vegetables? Ending the quiz in three and the presentation in three, two, one, and go. The answer is cooked vegetables. Thank you very much, viewers, attendees. Ah, you want to say something? Um, uh, just now, somebody raised his hand. Okay. 
is left. Never mind. Please for watching the presentation today. I hope it was gainful. I would now like to end today's show and would like to request all to stay safe during these testing times, stay at home, follow good personal hygiene. Whenever you go out of the house, please cover yourselves well. Try to avoid crowded places, try to avoid touching surfaces, people. Do not use the same footwear that you were using outside at home. Change your footwear, change your clothes, take a bath when you come home. Do anything and everything possible to make sure that you are safe. And I would like to also thank God for, for blessing us and keeping the disease the coronavirus away from us. Thank you and I wish you a very good day today. May God bless you. Riyaz, kaisa laga? Sir, hacha laga. Samjh mein aaya kuch? Aaya hai, sir. इतना ज्यादा नहीं आया मतलब स्टूडेंट ऑफ फर्स्ट ईयर सेकेंड ईयर थर्ड ईयर फर्स्ट ईयर अच्छा अच्छा नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू बी शेयरिंग माय सेकंड वीडियो ऑन हर्ब्स अब मैं एक और वीडियो शेयर कर रहा हूँ हर्ब्स के ऊपर तो उसको देखो और नहीं देखना चाहते तो मत देखो उसको यूट्यूब पे लाइव आएगा तो बाद में भी देख सकते हो चाहे तो हम्म देखोगे बिजी तो नहीं हो सर I am Chef Professor Anand Mittal, comfortably seated in my tent. Ah, uh, sunai dera bata. Riaz, can you hear me? Please unmute. Hello. Ah, uh, sunai dera bata. Ah, uh, sir, bolye. Abhi uh, sir, sunai dera. Video hai, sunai dera hai, dikhai dera hai. हाँ सर दिखाई दे रही है टेरेस गार्डन सराउंडेड बाय हर्ब्स यू कैन सी ओकरा ओकरा ग्रोइंग हेयर सच अ बिग वन इट विल बी हार्वेस्टेड टुडे एंड देयर सो मेनी अदर्स सी थ्री ऑफ देम इज बैक 
flowers, sokra flowers, and so many other things. Anyway, so I'm here to read out from my book, Simply Cooking Theory and Principles. I'll be reading out on my chapter on herbs from the first edition. I turn to page 63. Herbs. The word herb comes from the Latin word herba, meaning grass. Herbs are defined as the leaves and stems of soft-stemmed, non-woody plants. The types of plants from which the common herbs originate primarily grow in temperate climates. Herbs and their use can be traced back to ancient Egypt, Greece and China. It would seem that they were originally gathered for culinary purposes. It has been said that medicine developed as a byproduct of cooking. This duality of purpose still exists for many herbs today. Herbs can be categorized as fresh herbs. Fresh herbs are those which are used without alteration, freshly picked. They are preferably most suitable as their flavor is most complete. Dried herbs are the same as fresh herbs except they have had their water removed which concentrates the flavor. One teaspoon of dried herbs is roughly equivalent to three teaspoons of fresh herbs. Pickled herbs. Pickled herbs are fresh herbs which can be stored in brine or vinegar or a mixture of brine and vinegar. And fourth, frozen herbs may be either directly frozen or between 0 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit or blanched and then frozen. Sir, they have the flavoring power that of fresh herbs. Cold foods. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. I will do it. Okay. Sultan, in the preparation of hot foods, they can be added at the beginning, middle or at the end of the cooking process determined by the type of flavoring and type of food. Fresh herbs take a very short time to... I am Chef Professor Anand Mittal, comfortably seated in my terrace garden, surrounded by... Now, can you see the video, Riaz? Can you see the video now? Riaz, please unmute. Please unmute. Okay, okay. Thank you. Herbs and vegetables. You can see okra. Okra growing here. Such a big one, it will be harvested today. And there are so many others. See, three of them at the back. Flowers, okra flowers, and so many other things. Anyway, so I'm here to read out from my book, Simply Cooking Theory and Principles. I'll be reading out on my chapter on herbs from the first edition. I turn to page 63. Herbs. 
the word herb comes from the Latin word herba, meaning grass. Herbs are defined as the leaves and stems of soft-stemmed, non-woody plants. The types of plants from which the common herbs originate primarily grow in temperate climates. Herbs and their use can be traced back to ancient Egypt, Greece and China. It would seem that they were originally gathered for culinary purposes. It has been said that medicine developed as a byproduct of cooking. This duality of purpose still exists for many herbs today. Herbs can be categorized as fresh herbs. Fresh herbs are those which are used without alteration, freshly picked. They are preferably most dried herbs are the same as fresh herbs except they have had their water removed which concentrates the flavor. One teaspoon of dried herbs is roughly equivalent to three teaspoons of fresh herbs. Pickled herbs pickled vinegar or a mixture of brine and vinegar and fourth frozen herbs may be either directly frozen or between 0 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit or blanched and then frozen they have the flavoring power quite similar to that of fresh herbs cold foods should sit at least one hour in the refrigerator after the addition of herbs to allow for full release and combination of flavors. In the preparation of hot foods, they can be added at the beginning, middle or at the end of the cooking process determined by the type of flavoring and type of food. Fresh herbs take a very short time to release their flavor. These should be added at the end of the cooking process. Ground herbs and dry herbs require more time for their flavor to be released and should be added at the middle of the cooking process. Nutrition Spices and herbs have very little nutritional value themselves. They do allow us to decrease fat and salt content in products, yet still maintain good flavor. Reducing fat and salt content can leave food very bland, but spices and herbs bring it back to life. Storage and handling. To store fresh herbs, it is best to pick them right before they bloom. It is at this point that their flavor is the strongest. Each type should be separately wrapped in a slightly damp paper towel placed in a plastic bag and stored under refrigeration. Fresh herbs are very delicate and should be handled with great care. If fresh herbs begin to turn brown, they can be chopped finely and combined with sufficient oil to keep them moist. This mixture can be stored in a jar in the refrigerator and will keep well for at least two weeks. Dried herbs should be dated and stored in airtight containers. Dried herbs should last approximately six months before they start to lose their flavor. Frozen herbs should also be dated and they should be stored in sealable heavy plastic bags. Some commonly used herbs are basil, 
Basil is one of the most widely used herbs in the world from pesto to spaghetti sauce to desert treats. Capers, capers have long been a favorite in the Mediterranean region. The small green herb bud lend a piquant, sour and salty flavor to salads, dressings, sauces, vegetables and a variety of vegetable dishes. Shives Shives are garlic shives. Shives and garlic shives are an excellent choice for those who want onion or garlic flavor but to a milder degree. Cilantro Cilantro is a milder version of coriander. It looks very similar to parsley, but the flavors are quite different. The roots are used to make Thai curry pastes. It is used in cilantro grilled chicken breast, grilled shrimp, and cilantro pesto pizza, etc. Dill weed and dill seed. Dill weed date back to 3000 years and has long been used in homeopathic remedies for hiccups and stomach distress. Dill is a flavorful addition to seafood, dips, salads, dressings, vegetables, and more. Edible flowers. They make food not only taste good, but also look pretty. Oregano. Oregano became popular in the US due to servicemen returning from World War II demanding pizza, yet it has always been popular in the Mediterranean. Rosemary Rosemary is a versatile aromatic herb used in a wide variety of dishes including fruit salads, soups, vegetables, meats, especially lamb, fish, eggs, stuffings, dressings and even desserts. Red snapper is classically roasted with rosemary. Sage. Once prized for its medicinal value, the most popular use of sage, sage these days is in stuffing for the Thanksgiving turkey. It helps digest grease in fatty foods. Tarragon. Tarragon is a bittersweet herb with a hint of licorice flavor, but too much can overwhelm the recipe. Thyme. Thyme is good not only for savory dishes, but also for desserts. Parsley. One of the most common and versatile herbs used in Western cooking, parsley has a light peppery flavor that complements other seasonings. It's most used in sauces, salads, and sprinkled over dishes at the end of cooking for a flash of green and fresh taste. Flat leaf or Italian parsley has the best texture and flavor for cooking. Curly parsley is best used only as a garnish. For example, grilled artichokes with parsley and garlic, pom frites with parsley butter, etc. Mint. Although more commonly associated with sweet treats, mint lends its cooling property bite to plenty of savory dishes, particularly from the Middle East and North Africa. Fresh mint is perfect for summer fresh salads to liven up a sauce or to brew fragrant trees. Teas. The cooling flavor is also used to temper spicy curries. Roast leg of lamb is classically served with fresh mint sauce. Uses of herbs in cooking. Herbs have been used in cooking in all cuisines of the world since ages. The prime reason for their use in food is to mask 
the flavor of certain strong smelling foods and the secondary reason is for their nutritional benefits and medicinal values following are some uses of herbs number 1 flavoring herbs can be chopped minced toned and added to soups sauces gravies and curries they can be used whole as sprigs bukegani which means bunch of herbs herbs are tied together in a string in a bouquet consist of bukegani consists of few sprigs of parsley thyme and rosemary tied together with a sprig is a string herbs can be chopped minced toned and added to soups sauces gravies and curries the bukegani is immersed into cooking liquid for a while and then removed so that the food acquires the flavor but does not get discolored due to the cooking herbs chopped herbs can be used in sausages and stuffings for various cold cuts herbs can also be used for flavoring cheeses cakes breads and cookies second use of herbs is garnishing herbs are commonly used for garnishing they can be minced finely or used as whole leaf for decorating foods and desserts some of the classic way of using herbs as a garnish are number 1 fine herbs the french word means an assortment of finely chopped fresh seasonal herbs the most commonly used herbs in the assortment are parsley thyme tarragon and chervil sprigs sprigs of fresh herbs are immersed in ice cold water till they become super crisp and then used erect on dishes to add height to the dish and to improve its aesthetic value deep fried herbs such as parsley curry leaves basil and rosemary are deep fried for garnishing deep frying makes them extra crisp and dark green in color seasoning herbs are used for seasoning foods in the following ways number 1 saltless seasoning a mixture of dried herbs like dill thyme and oregano are combined with dried onion sesame seeds black hill paprika and garlic powder to make a saltless seasoning these are used as a substitute for salt for those who have high blood pressure are or are in low sodium diets second herbal salts powdered rock salt or just table salt is mixed with dried herbs to make herbal salts this mixture is stored in an airtight container for about one or two months and then ground together till they bind blend well number 4 herbal oils oils can be flavored by one or more herbs These oils are used for making vinaigrettes or dressings for salads and also used for glazing meat. They can also be used for making sauces. Basil oil is commonly used in Italian cuisine. Herbal drinks. Herbs have been drunk since centuries as a decoction, as a cure for diseases, as mild as headaches and as severe as cancer. In fact they were used as medicines before medicines were invented In hotels the various herbal drinks that are served are herbal teas herbal water cocktails and mocktails herbal vinegars herbs are infused in vinegar or wine for preserving them for a minimum of 2 weeks under direct sunlight 
This leads to not only the preservation of herbs, but also in subtly flavoring the vinegar and wines. Herb butter. This is made by mixing soft butter and chopped herbs. Some of the most commonly compound butters are Maitre d'Hotel butter, Café de Paris butter, and Shai butter. Sauces and spreads. Herbs can also be used as combination and cooked to make sauces, soups, and spreads that can be used such as herb sauces, mint sauce, chutneys, spreads, and marinades. So that is the end of this video. Thank you. Thank you viewers for watching. Uh, if there are any questions, you can type them in the chat box. And I will answer them. That will be all for today. Thank you and bye-bye.